DuPont Cavalcade of America, starring Dorothy McGuire. Good evening. This is Dorothy McGuire. In the autumn of 1900, a bulletin was issued by the War Department. Yellow fever epidemic, Havana, Cuba. Nurses urgently needed. A young nurse, Clara Mars, saw it, responded. And in tonight's cavalcade, you will hear the story of her work, her love, and her heroism. Now, an original radio play, No Greater Love, suggested by the life of an American nurse, Clara Mars, and starring Dorothy McGuire on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. Washington, September 1900. Two young ladies are waiting in the musty outer office of the Surgeon General of the United States Army. They are very pretty, very neat in their starched white shirt waists and blue serge skirts. And they are very nervous. Stop shaking, Bertha. Oh, you're just as scared as I am. Of course I am. But they won't accept me. They'll think I'm not brawny enough. Do you suppose it's really bad down there? With yellow fever, there are no degrees of badness. It's all ghastly. Young ladies? Uh, yes, sir. Come in here, please. Yes, sir. Your names and training, please. Uh, Mars, Clara Louise, German Hospital, Newark, New Jersey, U.S. Army, and the Philippines. Wilkes, Bertha, R.N., Terre Haute, Indiana. You wish to volunteer for duty at Havana for the duration of the epidemic? Yes, sir. Any idea of what you'll be up against? I've seen Yellow Jack. I, I know what it can do. Do you know that in Cuba, hundreds of people are dying every day? You'll be working all day, every day, taking a big chance of contracting it yourself. Are you trying to discourage us, sir? We thought you were short of nurses. We are. But you must realize what you're getting into. We don't know the cause, and we have no cure. Our nurses will need enormous strength and stamina. Job for huskies, Miss Mars. You appear to be rather on the frail side. Well, please don't worry about that, sir. My stamina is in my red hair, like Samson's. Mm. When do we leave? How soon can you pack? We are packed. Good. You will leave immediately. This is the doctor's and the nurse's mess. I expect you girls are hungry after all that sea air. Mmm, hot coffee. You suppose it'll be any good here? Hospital food's the same everywhere. They hire a spoiler to stand at the kitchen door and take the taste out of everything. Hey, nurses, pretty ones. I don't believe it. Hello, Steve. Hello, Doc Franklin. Where'd you find them? Miss Mars and Miss Wilkes. Oh, uh... how do you do? And I hope you like to dance. This <laughs> is Mr. Dolan, a member of Dr. Gorgas Sanitation Commission. How do you, how do, you do? do? Ladies, I'm at your service, and if you want to hear how we're sanitizing Havana, I'll be happy to give you the horrible details. In uh, one of our less sanitary Cuban cafes, of course. <laughs> well, that's very generous of you, Mr. Dolan, but I rather like it here. You won't very long, Miss Mars. I've been wondering, actually, whether you can stand the strain of hospital routine. And I've been wondering how long it would take you to get around to that, Doctor. Usually it goes with the how-do-you-do's. If you don't mind, I'll stay here. And I'll appropriate every minute of your spare time. Oh, really? Well, uh telling you about uh, the, the Dolan theory of municipal sanitation. <laughs> I doubt if she'll have any spare time, Steve. Oh, uh, please, everybody. What's going on? It's a toast we drink nearly every night. Yeah, seems Ladies we're having a little gentlemen. epidemic. To those who have gone, to the next to go. Gee. Still want to stay, Miss Mars? Of course. Good. Your first assignment will be the death ward. Hello, Karis. Mr. Dolan, you shouldn't be in here. This is the... I know, I know. Well, there might be danger even in the corridor. Well, if it's dangerous for me out here, what is it for you hour after hour in there with the dying? I'm a nurse. Oh, look at you. All messed up. You look terrible. 
Well, that's a fine way to talk to a lady. Somebody has to. You can't keep this up. Why not? We did in Savannah during the typhoid and the Philippines. Well, it's, it's a waste. Pretty girl like you. That's not worthy of you, Mr. Dolan. I don't ask you if you're wasting yourself going about fumigating hovels, cleaning garbage out of the streets. All right, all right. I'm sorry. But you, you, you've been here three days, and I'll bet you haven't slept three hours. Mm, five. Nurse has to keep up her strength. And now, if you'll excuse oh, me... Oh, I, I have a surprise for you. A dinner party. A party? Uh-huh. Oh, no, I couldn't. Oh, no, no, wait, wait. The host is a doctor. He's, he's charming, a real Cuban gentleman of the old school. Done a lot of research nobody pays any attention to, but don't let that worry you. I know you'll like him. What, what kind of research? Oh, I don't know. Something about mosquitoes. What's his name? Dr. Collis Finlay. I've heard of him. He's the man who thinks it's mosquitoes that carry yellow jack. I remember now. All right, if you'll come with me to his house, he'll tell you all about it. And he couldn't ask for a prettier audience. That's your quote of Blarney for the day, Mr. Dolan. Steve. Steve. You'll come? No, I'm sorry. I can't think about dinner parties or mosquitoes or anyone's theories right now. There's just too much to do. Yeah, I know carrots. But look, promise... If you find a spare moment, give me one little thought. All right, Steve. I promise. Try to be still in my This will help you, I think. Just lean back and swallow. Poca, poca. Es bueno, Juan. Muy bueno. Senorita, mi cabeza. Si, si, you'll say. Senorita, el padre, por favor. I'll get the padre for you, Juanita. Trust me. He'll be here very soon. Now just try to lie quietly and rest. Oh, Bertha, where's the padre? He's needed here quickly. He's busy with a patient. But Juan is dying. So is the patient he's with now. So are the three others waiting for him. But I'm afraid they can't wait much longer. Oh, there's so many. Oh, Bertha, this is getting to the point where I feel if I can't do something, I'll, I'll, I'll go out of my mind. Well, don't take it to heart, so you're doing all you can. I wonder. Well, what else can a nurse do but be a nurse? I suppose you're right, Bertha. Bertha, there's a man here in town who believes that mosquitoes carry the fever. Mosquitoes? Yes. Really? Is he crazy? Well, everyone thinks so, and he may be. But I'm going to find out about his theory anyway. I know they think I am a little crazy for suspecting an ordinary house mosquito, but I am convinced that when the stegomaya bites an infected person, she carries the virus with her, transmits it to the blood of the next person she bites. Hmm, Lucretia Borgia, hmm? Oh, the lady with the poison, poised for every occasion. Exactly. And because her larvae are hatched in still water, even clean water, Steve, your sanitation measures mean very little, unless you can read Havana or breathing places. Standing water jars, garden pools. Yes, but, Doc, if the theory were valid, wouldn't, wouldn't somebody agree with you after 19 years? Ah, no one wishes to believe the obvious, my friend. But there must be some proof. Well, I have tested many types of animals. Apparently, man is the only one susceptible. Oh. So, I cannot very well experiment with him. Oh, hardly. However, there is an army doctor, Walter Reed. He's interested enough now to conduct tests. But how, how could he find proof if you can't? One of his assistants has volunteered. He has been beaten several times by mosquitoes, carrying infected blood. And? Well, so far, there has been no reaction. Of course, he may be a natural immune. Reed will have to find other subjects. Human guinea pigs? He can't do that. Why not? If, if people volunteered? People in the medical profession. Oh, careful, little girl. Don't you go getting any crazy ideas. Hey. 
Hey, Carrots, do you realize it's been a week, a whole big, fat, lonesome week since I even had a look at you? <laughs> Next time it'll be longer if you don't stop having them play that song. Uh, while the band played on. Oh, thank goodness you dance better than you sing. Oh, just wait till all this is over. We'll, we'll dance to a real orchestra. In the States, Brooklyn, the St. George. And what's wrong with the Brighton, Atlantic City? New Jersey? Nah. Sir, you're speaking of the state I love. Oh, no wonder you're interested in mosquitoes. I hear they're big enough there to run for office. I won't dance another step with you. <laughs> All right, sit down. We'll, we'll order supper. And I, I want to talk to you anyway. Let's talk about you. I've been hearing stories. Oh, I swear there's no other woman in my life. Not even a she mosquito? Uh, what have you heard? That you've been going through the infected areas with Dr. Gorgas, looking for breeding places. Oh, routine doesn't mean a thing. Does uh, Dr. Gorgas suspect our Lucretia? I haven't discussed it with him. Anyway, I'm not convinced. Well, you shouldn't be. Not until a, there have been enough tests made. You're, you're, you're not still thinking of that. Of course I am. Well, stop it. Think about yourself for a while. Think think about us for a change. How, how you're going to tell me when I need a haircut, how I'm <laughs> going to bring you breakfast in bed, how you're going to laugh at all my old jokes. Oh, I have thought of all those things. Hey, carrots, do you mean it? Mm -hmm. Oh, because if you do, I, I don't care what happens just so we can live the way we ought to live. Oh, we, we'll dance to any old tune you like. We'll laugh. We're young, Clara. We haven't laughed nearly enough. Oh, I know. Oh, Steve, I, I've had nightmares and daydreams and tossed and turns. i driven poor Bertha crazy talking to myself, and uh, I just don't get anywhere. I'm afraid I am in love with you. Darling. Let me look at you, Steve. Let me just look and look and... Pretend we'll always be together, just like this. Well, Clara, I think it's letting up a little. Only 25 patients admitted so far, three less than yesterday. Well, Dr. Franklin, I think we may be able to thank Dr. Gorgas for that. Oh? Well, surely you think he's right, ordering screens and mosquito netting for the hospital? I don't like mosquitoes any more than the next person. Keeping them out of the hospital has nothing to do with the epidemic. Excuse me, doctor, but it could have. Those mosquitoes could have been carrying infection right out of the wards, right into the city. Clara, you've proved yourself here magnificently. But please stick to your job. Let the theorists stick to theirs, will you? Clara! Doctor, I don't oh, see... Clara, where... there's a new patient. Oh, excuse me, doctor, but I thought she'd want to know. Well, I think there's an empty bed Well, I, and... I thought she'd want to see him. Oh, Clara, what, what's the matter? It's Steve Dolan. Steve. Steve, darling. Top of the morning, Carrots. What are you doing here? Oh, don't shoot till you see the yellow of my eyes. Try to lie still. I'm going to take wonderful care of you. Oh, that's why I came, honey. I wasn't seeing enough of you. You're going to get well, my dearest. Mm -hmm. You're going to bring me breakfast in bed, remember? Uh-huh. And I'm going to laugh at all your old jokes. Bzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
starring Dorothy McGuire as Clara Maz on The Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. American nurse Clara Maas had given gladly of her strength and of her days to ease a little the sufferings of Havana's yellow fever victims in 1900. But the pestilence spread, and no man knew whence it came. The medical world laughed at Dr. Carlos Finley, called him the Mosquito Man. But though an American doctor, Walter Reed, dared test his theory, a pall of uncertainty and sudden death hung over Havana. During those days, Clara Maas came to realize that Yellow Jack indeed plays no favorites, for it had struck down Steve Dolan. Steve, are you awake? Carrot. Shh. Don't let them hear you. I'm not supposed to be here. It's... It's cruel when there's so... little time... I have been all evening. I sent him a request. <laughs> Don't you go trying to sing it. All right. Uh, I'll save it till we're dancing at the St. George. The Brighton. When we'll even get married and Joyce here. Oh, of course we will. Hey, mm. I forgot to tell you. Casey, he's my cousin. I guess he'll have to take you dancing after all. Oh, no, darling. We'll be together. That's right, honey. We'll be together. Steve. Oh. Steve. Darling. <laughs> I thought you should know what Clara has in mind to do. I am most upset by it. She actually wants to volunteer for that mosquito nonsense? Uh, pardon me, Dr. Finley. I forgot it. It was your... My nonsense, yes. But also it is Walter Reed's. And his volunteers have managed to become very sick after controlled experiments. Very soon now the world... The world may no longer think it is so nonsensical. Yes? Dr. Franklin, may I see you for a minute? Well, Doctor, we may as well have it out right now. Yes, Clara, come in. Oh, I thought... Oh, Dr. Finley, hello. Good afternoon, senorita. Sit down, Clara. I understand you wish to volunteer... Yes, sir, I do. Do you realize what it would involve, Clarita? You would be isolated first for several weeks, shut entirely away so that Dr. Reed's staff may be satisfied you have had no possible contact with the fever. Then, Dr. Carl, he will bring into you a tube containing a mosquito, which has previously bitten an infected person. And when she has beaten you, you are gambling on your life. I gamble on my life every time I go near a ah, patient. But these experiments are to prove that you do not. Then why, why don't you want me to help prove it? Because we could never replace you. Everyone's replaceable. Anyway, they'd give me the best of care. You give your patients the best of care, but you can't save them. That's exactly why I want to do this. When I lost Steve, I lost someone I loved very deeply. And I lost every person who's died before my eyes in this terrible place. 
We understand, Clarita. Knowledge is a hazardous thing. It comes slowly to man and in great pain. You help to alleviate the pain, and that is probably the most important duty of all. I know. But I must add to knowledge when I may, or I'm betraying every man who has suffered and died for it. Senorita Clara. Here I am, Dr. Finley. I'm still waiting for Madame Lucretia. It is strange talking to you through a screen in an isolation ward. <laughs> Do I look much like a guinea pig? Now confess. Well, I, uh, I once knew one with eyes just like yours. <laughs> That's because they're looking better after my long rest. Tell me, uh... How do you feel, really? Mm, gain five pounds, all in the wrong places. Oh. Sleep 48 hours a day and don't seem to mind a bit. Don't even feel very guilty anymore. Guilty? Well, for neglecting my patients. Dr. Franklin says some new girls have come down from the state since I've been in here. Senorita, are you sure you still want to go through with it? Certainly. By now, you surely cannot have caught the fever from many other source. Dr. Finley, is it to be today? It is to be immediately. Oh. Dr. Carroll is he's on his way over. Well, why don't we be sporting about it? Let the vampire out of the test tube and let her fly around so we can do battle with it until she bites me. Oh, no, no. Why not? I want to hear her sing to me. Steve says she sings a regular song. Casey would dance with a strawberry blonde. I do not understand, Senorita. Oh, never mind. It was just something we laughed about once. Only... We didn't laugh very hard, not very long. Dr. Finlay? Oh, Dr. Carroll. Oh. Miss Mars? It's half of the afternoon, Dr. Carroll. Well, since you volunteered for this, the Stegomaya's ready, if you are. Is she in that tube? Let me have a look at her. Perhaps you'd better not. She isn't very attractive. Oh, you're right. She's put on a little weight. Are you sure you don't want to back out? Sure. All right. Hold out your right arm. May I scratch afterwards? Better not if you can help it. <laughs> Might die of blood poisoning. There. Is it all right if I say ouch? For my money, you may say anything you please. Well, there she goes. And Steve, my darling, she's no lady. like seeing Dr. Dr. Finley? Always feel like seeing Dr. Finley. Will you come in, sir? Clarita. Oh, come close. Now we know you won't catch anything. I hope you feel better today. Oh, I don't. Feeling absolutely awful as the nature of the beast. Dr. Carroll, he sends you news. The soldiers who volunteered... They have recovered. <laughs> Remind me to swap symptoms with them when Dr. Franklin lets me out of here. We all hope that that won't be very long. Oh, I'm a nurse, remember? You can't fool me that easily. But it's a great triumph for my favorite Cuban scientist. Oh, the research has just begun. I guess I'll have to get well then so I can help you find a serum. Get well for your own sake, Clara. <sighs> and Steve's. <sighs> We We've got a date. We're going to dance. And dance. And dance. War Department, Washington. 1 August 1901, from the office of the Surgeon General. Subject, Mars, Clara Louise. Receipt of dispatch reporting subject's death acknowledged. 
The whole nation should be aware of the great significance that attaches to the sacrifice of her life. It was important to science and humanity. Recalling words uttered 1,900 years ago, greater love than this no man hath. It is ordered that Clara Mars be given burial with highest military honors. The Surgeon General, United States Army. Thank you, Dorothy McGuire. Now, here's Bill Hamilton of the DuPont Company. The time, early morning. The place, an average home. Mother goes into the kitchen to get breakfast, and there on the table she finds part of a loaf of bread she forgot to put away in the bread box the night before. The wrapper is open at the end. Inside, the first few slices of bread have gone stale. Sometimes they're thrown out, wasted. And today, when food conservation is so important, no one wants to waste anything. Of course, there are ways of using stale bread, for example, bread pudding. But the real answer is to keep every loaf of bread we buy fresh and appetizing right down to the last nutritious bite. This is easier done than you may realize, thanks to the fact that many bakers today wrap their variety breads and other baked goods in moisture-proof DuPont cellophane. Cellophane helps to keep bread fresh, not only as it travels from the bakery to your store and then to your home, but for several days after it reaches your home, if you follow just one simple rule. Open the wrapper carefully at one end. Take out only the slices you need and keep the rest of the loaf right in the wrapper. Twist the cellophane wrapper tight at the open end. That's all you do. Do this and you'll be helping to save bread and save wheat. Today, more and more food products are reaching your grocer's shelves wrapped in cellophane. It helps to keep them pure, wholesome, and fresh. DuPont cellophane not only protects what it shows, it shows what it protects. You can always see exactly what you're buying. Cellophane is one of the DuPont company's better things for better living through chemistry. <laughs> Next week's Cavalcade star will be the dynamic Hollywood actress Geraldine Fitzgerald. Our play, Paging Miss Ellen, is a true and romantic story of a girl's efforts for recognition as a scientist. But with the love of a professor, Ellen Richards won her struggle. Be sure to listen to Cavalcade next week, starring Geraldine Fitzgerald. <laughs> Tonight's original DuPont cavalcade, No Greater Love, was written by Virginia Radcliffe. Dorothy McGuire appeared by arrangement with David O. Selznick, producers of Duel in the Sun. Featured in tonight's play with Dorothy McGuire were Lyle Sudrow as Steve, Edwin Jerome as Dr. Finley, and Joseph Bell as Dr. Franklin. The music was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Bryan. And this is Ted Pearson inviting you to listen next week to Paging Miss Ella, starring Geraldine Fitzgerald. Cavalcade of America is presented each week from the stage of the Long Acre Theater on Broadway in New York and is brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.